everybody on Facebook land. I'm sorry I'm late. Hello, this is Mallory Donahue of the Self Sewn Wardrobe Podcast and the Self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group. This broadcast originally appeared in the Self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group. So if you want to be part of a really fabulous, funny, intelligent sewing community, go to facebook.com slash groups slash self sewn wardrobe and you can request to join and I will approve you and you will meet lots of fun people. In fact, uh, something fun that somebody posted earlier this morning, uh, Mary did, uh, she said that Facebook was kind of depressing her so she um, asked that we all post something like funny or pretty that we had made. So if you want to go check out that thread that Mary um, started, um, I think a, a few people have already posted in it and I, I can't wait to see, and I'm gonna try and find the picture of my dog in her sweater because I think it's hilarious. Good morning to Jacqueline and to Betsy. Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm a little late this morning, but um, do go check out the, uh, Mary's thread that she started in the group about funny and happy things that you can sew. Hi, Marisa. Okay, so um, uh, this morning, I'm gonna film a little video here about threading with your presser foot up. This is something that Bethany had sort of asked about. Um, <laughs> well, Mary, you're late, but I recommended everyone go see your thread that uh, you started about happy sewing pictures. Hi, Tracy and Janet. So uh, threading with your presser foot up is very important. It was back in the day, last August, yes, uh, it's 2017, uh-huh. Last August is when Mom and I started recording the Sewing Out Loud podcast. We didn't launch it until the following January. So our podcast anniversary, I think, is like, it may have passed us, but um, the Sewing Out Loud podcast anniversary, you know, the one-year anniversary, is um, is is uh, j just happened or it's now or something like that. I can't remember. Um, I'll have to go look. But this was the first episode that, the first topic that we covered in so, in the Sewing Out Loud podcast. So if you have not gotten a chance to listen to the Sewing Out Loud podcast, there's a whole other sewing podcast and it's mom and it's me and we release it every Friday. And threading with your presser foot up is so important. It is so essential and vital to your success as a stitcher, okay? So problems, can arise from not threading with your presser foot up. And I'm gonna talk about those, but first I'm going to show you what it looks like when you raise and lower your presser foot. Um, I'm actually gonna go around to the front of the table and I'm gonna kind of hold the machine up close to the camera uh, with the, I was gonna do it with the covers on and actually, let's see, let's see how much we can see it here. There's. I bet the video quality is, is not that great. I'm, I'm just gonna take the cover off here. Uh, this is the Baby Lock Sophia, and she's my friend because she is so small that she <laughs> fits in the frame very easily. Um, and I, I love her, so there's a little Phillips screw. And the cover for the Sophia comes off really easily. <laughs> That was, I, I hope I get more graceful as the day moves on. Okay, so <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have to shake it very much. Okay, I'm going to take the screw off. <laughs> Don't let your machine covers fall off your machine. Uh, that's not a good idea. Inside the front cover, the Sophia, what this is, is it's a <laughs> needle threader. Uh, it's your needle threader lever and uh, it, it moves the needle threader so it can come down and, and be fabulous and thread your needle for you. Um, and uh, yeah, normally I have to kind of like shake it to get it off. I think I've taken this off for somebody recently though, but oh gosh, it looks like, you know, the Terminator in here, right? Um, we, I still am gonna bring this up front at it to show you, but you can see um, the, the guts of part of the machine here and you really wanna be careful uh, this isn't something that you really need to do unless maybe you think you've got some like thread caught up in there but you you can sort of access like your take-up lever etc just taking off that front part of the machine but you can't really get to a 
a ton of stuff like for service, you know, like a, you, you need to take the machine entirely apart uh, in order to access all the places where it needs to be oiled and cleaned, etc. But, you know, if you thread with your presser foot down, like you're not supposed to, uh, you could have some extra thread wrapped around there somewhere and it could be a problem. So I'm going to run up to the front of the table here and I'm going to show you where the tension disc is that moves when you, um, uh, when you raise and lower your presser foot. So I'm going to take the mic with me. You all are always so nice about me changing formats here. Sorry, podcast listeners, if the sound changes extremely. Okay, I'm going to get the machine. And the machine is not on while I'm doing this. Oh, oh yeah, that's going to be good. Okay, so I'm going to figure out a way to hold this. All right, you all see the number two on this machine right here? Okay, I'm going to raise and lower my presser foot. Presser foot up, presser foot down. Presser foot up, presser foot down. Up, down, up, down. All right, so <laughs> um, when you have the covers on the machine, you can sort of look in there on this machine and see that moving. Um, so I hope we get this video edited and up on YouTube because Bethany said she wanted to share it to, uh, you know, talk to some people about how, how, uh, how this mechanism works, why we insist upon you threading with your presser foot up. And I mean, honestly, if you tell somebody to like thread with their presser foot up and they're like super resistant to it, like maybe just stop talking to that person. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, it's a worth a try, right? Okay, so this concept applies to almost every sewing machine that you're going to be using, okay? Um, it doesn't apply, the, the machines to which it does not apply are some like sit-down mid-arm quilters or long-arm machines where the tension disc is out from the machine and you have to, you still need to get the thread in there, but it's just there's no presser foot lever, okay? Um, but that's a very specialized, uh, you know, situation, okay? And so if you've ever, um, let's, let's talk about what happens when, when you don't thread with your presser foot up, okay? If you don't thread with your presser foot up, you saw those two pieces of metal coming together pretty darn tight, right? So if you just follow your threading path and your presser foot's down, your thread might not get in that tension disc. Now, you might get lucky sometimes and the thread might get in the tension disc because you did it real hard or you did it just right. And good for you, if you did, that's great. But uh, you will, one day, you won't get in there, okay, with your presser foot down. And then you'll start to sew and you will get a lot of extra thread underneath your project. We call that bird's nesting, or people will say my thread is, you know, nodding on the bottom or this or that, um, whatever, you know, whatever you wanna call it, okay. <laughs> uh, that can be caused by not having that upper thread in the upper tension disc. And what happens is your needle goes down, it brings some thread down there and it's totally unregulated and it brings a bunch of that upper thread to the bottom. Um, I don't, I don't really feel comfortable like doing that, uh, but if I did do it, what I'd want to do is I'd want to have one color up in my top thread and another in my bobbin so that people could see that that bird's nesting, the majority of it down there is probably upper thread, not lower thread. So when your thread balls up underneath your project, when you have the bird's nesting, when you have the problem, okay, that's actually a top tension issue. And when I say top tension issue, I mean you probably didn't get in the tension disc, not that you should change your top tension, okay? Very rarely when you're just doing like your normal sewing are you gonna be changing that tension. It's the last thing that you do. Amanda said that she calls threading with your presser foot up rule number one. Yes, great, Thread, threading properly, you know, is rule number one. Um, the other thing is the take up lever right here um, where 
it's um, step four on the Sophia. And if you are listening on the podcast or, you know, you can't see it super well uh, on the Facebook Live video, normally you go over from your spool, you, um, you know, there's some kind of thread guide on the top of the machine, you go down, you know, toward the floor, and then you go back up again, wrap around something and come back down toward the floor. Though that second, you know, that wrap around part is getting it in your take-up lever. And Threading the machine with the needle and the take-up lever in the highest position also helps you to thread properly. Not getting in your take-up lever can cause a similar problem and it will cause a very loud noise. It will sound like you are hammering with your machine instead of sewing with it and you're like, oh my gosh, something's hitting something. Okay, uh, so and, and people are like, oh my gosh, something's hitting something, and then we rethread it and everything's fine. That loud sound is from unregulated top thread coming down, okay, and um, messing like with the hook system. It's a very unexpected sound, okay? Um, Aaron says, why does the thread sometimes jump out of the lever? Speed? Aaron, are you talking about the thread just like jumping out of the lever while you sew or cutting your thread and then restarting a seam and the thread coming like out of the needle and out of the lever. If you could um, if you could clarify that for me, if it jumps out of your lever, the, the more modern machines, the take up levers uh, really try to avoid uh, they they're they're made in such a way where they might have like a little spring on them or something or uh, the Sophia's here it kind of like dips down so that the thread will stay in there. Um, this is actually another really good sort of like thing to address though. Kind of what's in my brain right now from your question, Erin. Um, sometimes when you stop sewing on a non-electronic machine, okay your thread can come out of the needle when you start to sew again. And Fred said this happens to her, sometimes I cut too short. Ah, you can avoid that, okay? And actually, okay, this is good. Oh, oh, hey, thanks, thanks everybody for asking these awesome questions. Okay, I'm turning the hand wheel right now toward the stitcher, or toward, toward like you, like you're, you're facing the machine, okay? Um, the machine's back is to me, okay? Um, so, when you move the hand wheel towards you right now, see the take up levers going down, okay? And then we keep moving it towards you and it goes down and then it starts to come back up again, right? And it meets its highest point and then it starts to come back down, okay? If you have a mechanical machine that kind of like stops wherever, right? You can be stopped in a position where the stitch has not, the needle has not finished the stitch cycle and the th the take up lever is still on its way up, okay? Uh, so Fred said, can I avoid it by cutting longer? You can, um, but what you can also do is you can move your hand wheel so that the take up lever is in the highest position, okay? When you're bringing your thread out, you know, um, and your project out to cut, so that when you start sewing again, the take up lever is on its way down, okay? Yes, the sweet spot on the flywheel where the thread pulls smoothly helps too. That's also correct. The other thing that may have happened to some of you is you go to pull your project out of your machine and you press your foot's up, okay? You pull your project out of your machine and you have three threads instead of two, okay? That's another case of the needle not being finished with the stitch cycle, okay? So once again, bring it so that the take up lever is all the way to the top. Now, sweet spot on the flywheel. It's really nice if your hand wheel, and I don't know if we can see it very well, but the Sophia actually has a little like notch on the hand wheel that can line up with the side of, the, of a seam on the casing of the machine, and that's the proper place. Now, I often tell people when they have an electronic machine, like Sophia, like Catherine, like anything above that, we kind of talked about these yesterday, really not to use the hand wheel a lot. There's a button right here called the needle up down button. 
and it proceeds with the machine. It goes like half a stitch. So if the needle's up, it'll put it down. If the needle's down, it'll put it up. And you can press it, and it'll go down and up and down and up. And it finishes the stitch cycle perfectly. This, you know, quote unquote, convenience feature can actually help you to prevent thread tangling or help you to prevent unthreading the needle as you start. So technically, you know, you can use the thread cutter on this Sophia and it'll bring the needle up properly, but you could have really not very much thread behind the needle and if the take-up lever's on the way down again, it's not pulling up any thread backwards through the needle, okay? Because that's what happens as the stitch is formed. The needle goes down into the hook area, um, into your bobbin, and there is a loop made. And then as the needle comes back up, the take-up lever takes up the slack so you get a smooth stitch on the other side. And that's why it's important to remember that your thread goes through your fabric. Uh, I can't remember how many times, I think it might be like 40 or something like that before it's actually laid down in a stitch. So that's another reason to get high quality thread, especially if you're ever sewing on something like sequins. Oop, it's behind me here, okay? So that is very, very important. Learning these sort of, what do I wanna say? Uh, learning how the machine works like this, I think can really help you to troubleshoot. I remember kind of learning about the three thread thing and be like, oh, the stitch cycle's not done. There's like still a loop of thread down there. Um, and you won't always have a problem getting three threads. You know, you'll get three threads, you'll cut, and one of those threads is cut on both sides. That's a loop, okay, from the top thread. That's what that is. Um, and once again, I don't really feel comfortable like duplicating that situation because <laughs> I don't want to hurt the machine. <laughs> um, so that is, uh, now Erin answered me. She said that sometimes her thread just like flies out of her hand wheel. <sighs> make sure you're getting in that tension disc and make sure that you are getting in to every thread guide like below the take up lever. Like there's a thread guide above the needle on the Sophia. And what that'll do is keep the thread, you know, properly laying and not give it too much slack to where it can pop out. And Erin, do you have a newer machine? Uh, Cause it, you know, it, like if that's happening on like some brand new machine you bought from a dealer, like, you know, go back to them. Cause that should not be happening. Um, and if it's an older one and there's a part that needs to be replaced or something, but that's not something that I have a problem with on my machine. If you're using slick thread, okay, uh, you can put a thread net on the thread so that you can uh, uh, regulate a little bit of the feed of the thread so we don't get like too much thread going on up there, too much slack maybe that would be popping out of the take up lever. And ZD, if you know anything else about that phenomenon, you know, let me know if you've got that anything like that but yet your your thread should not be popping out of your take up lever that shouldn't happen to you i would you know first of all all the time check your threading but then if it's still happening you know there might be something maybe you don't know about the machine or something like that check that out and when i say to people okay your machine's not working right are you threading it right sometimes they like get offended or something like that and i've just had to just you know, I might offend somebody. I try to say it in a nice way, but um, you know, that's what happens to me when I, when my machine's not working properly, I'm like, oh, I must have threaded it incorrectly. I must have missed something. I must have, I don't forget to raise my presser foot so much on my sewing machine, but sometimes, sometimes I'll forget to do it on the serger, especially when my, on your serger, you can't see the presser foot lever as well on those four thread sergers. Um, and so you're like, oh, everything's fine, you know. <laughs> uh, and um, so I've, 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 if ever my serger is not stitching nicely, if I'm getting like loops or something's like too tight or something like that, I just always assume, you know, I just cut and re-thread no problem. Now, I'm using a baby lock and it's easy to rethread, you know, uh, very, very simple. I don't, you know, I'm not like scared to do it. So, you know, if you've got a serger that is a little intimidating to rethread, really make sure 
that you use um, that you, uh, you know, raise your presser foot and do that properly. Okay. Now on some sergers, uh, some other brands, I've seen that they want you to raise the presser foot, but then they also want you to turn the tension down like to zero in order to thread them and then, you know, re-up the tension. So if your machine says to do that, make sure to pay attention. Okay. Uh, also, your owner's manual, okay? Um, you, if you look in your owner's manual, everybody could look at their owner's manual right now, and I guarantee you that like on the chapter that's like threading the machine, okay, uh, you will see number one says raise presser foot. It, you know, if it's not number two after like put thread on machine, okay, it's there. For so, I, it needs to be in big red letters though, and it's not. It's it just says raise presser foot, and it should say raise presser foot. You know, okay. <laughs> so um, I I can't get that across enough. It solves so many problems. We get machines in here for service, and sometimes people will say, you know, I was sewing, everything just went fine, and then all of a sudden, da da da. And if I can rethread their machine and we're sewing just fine. I, uh, you know, I, I, they can, they can go with their machine if we rethread it and it's just fine. You know, I, I, I do that now. Sometimes, you know, more is messed up now about, you know, rethreading, not fixing every problem. Okay. Um, when you get extra thread down in the bobbin area from unregulated top tension, you can cause other issues. Okay. If you don't get all that thread out, if you try to keep sewing, if you try to, um, you know, push the fabric through when you're having trouble or something like that, or you, you hear a loud noise and you think, I'll just push the fabric through harder, okay? Um, those can all cause other problems, especially on a machine that's not fixed on flat. And I guess I'll just talk about that because mom has brought it up in the past two live broad or well several bro live broadcasts um, and apparently that is one of the differences between um, baby lock and brother baby lock makes sure that their machines are fixed on flat so all the different working parts of their machines there are you know shafts that go into a little insertion points um, in order for everything to move around and instead of those shafts being all completely round they have a flat part on them and they're inserted into a little you know what looks like a circle but it is flat so that the machine cannot come out of time easily the other thing about one of these electronic computerized machines is that if it sends the needle down into a thickness or maybe you accidentally are trying to sew through like a metal zipper or you know a pin that's made of metal it will stop itself and it will go doo -doo 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 -doo, and it will say safety device activated okay it will also do that if you have some kind of like huge thread tangle up here that's preventing the needle from moving the way it should it stops itself so when people say oh electronic machines aren't good or something like that I'm like you know yeah, they are. They can prevent a lot of heartache, okay? They can prevent a lot of um, issues. I think I've shared this story before, but I was uh, teaching a how to use your sewing machine class, and a gentleman was in here, and he didn't, he like couldn't bring a sewing machine in or didn't bring it in, so I set him up. I actually set him up on the Baby Lock Rachel. And it's a, is it their first computerized machine? Either the Amelia or the Rachel is. And uh, he said, well, I'm going to sew on something a lot older at home. I, you know, so I envisioned some kind of, you know, like older singer or something like that, you know. And I said, okay, that's not a problem. Lots of this knowledge is going to translate to your, um, you, you know, your older machine. Just keep it in mind. And if we are finding some things on the Rachel that you're not finding on your other machine, you know, just ask me and I'll help you out. Okay. And this guy tried to start sewing with his sewing with this presser foot up I would say no less than six times okay <laughs> so Rachel goes beep 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 and it gives you some little error message I think it's a code on the Rachel because the screen isn't as large as the Sophia it says like E6 and if you look in the manual E6 
means that you're starting to sew with your presser foot up and the machine will not let you do that, okay? Now, let's transfer some knowledge here. Let's apply some knowledge. When your presser foot is up, your tension disc is open, okay? Even on a mechanical machine, okay, in, in general. So if you're on a mechanical machine and you have your presser foot up and you begin to sew, your top thread, once again, will be unregulated and you will have the same types of problems that you would have if you had threaded with your presser foot down and not gotten in that tension disc. And it will make a terrible sound and then you're like, oh, my stuff's not moving, oh no, oh no, um, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna you know, try to clean out this mess of thread that has accumulated un underneath my project. And, you know, uh, it's going to cost you some time, okay? So that is, that's my sort of like defense of the more modern machines. I mean, we've got older machines at home too, but you know, the fetishization of the vintage machines is something that really does bother me a little bit. Not that I think you like shouldn't sew on an older machine or something like that, but the idea of it's from a certain year, it's got to be good, is just completely incorrect. You don't know how that machine's been treated, or maybe you do. Great, okay? Um, you, you know, it could be like broken. <laughs> a machine from yester, you know, yesterday could be broken too, but let's not be like, oh, the vintage ones are just inherently better than the modern ones. That's just not how things work, okay? You know, you see anybody, um, uh, you know, driving around a 1950s car just like they do one from, you know, today. And, you know, any guy, any person who works in the automotive industry will say, oh, well, you can have an older car, but it's hard to get parts for. Yep. Okay. So that's a discussion we've been having when people are talking about buying like used and older machines. Um, it, it is something to keep in mind. So anyway, um, maybe I should discuss... <laughs> the use of metal in sewing machine manufacturing next time and people can, you know, uh, we, we can talk about the old, this adage that I hear all the time that says, uh, it, you know, oh, it's all metal, metal. It's, it's the best. And I can talk about that a little bit and get angry. I think I, I might actually take the machine entirely apart to show you all um, what that means. So if you'd like me to talk about that, let me know and I can do that next week. So um, once again, I apologize for being a little late this morning, but I appreciate all of you who have joined in to watch. It's been fabulous to have you. And I think a few people um, uh, are, you know, learning some things or, or uh, maybe uh, realizing that things that happened to them uh, were, were due to you know, maybe reasons they didn't know about, you know, uh, before. So I'm happy uh, to keep the conversation going about troubleshooting. And we try our best to help you out, you know, in the group. And we will, uh, you know, help you out with troubleshooting. And <laughs> like I said, we do our best. The other day, Glenda had a problem with her serger. And I was like, oh, I think it's this. And then she was like, oh, no, I found out it was this. And, you know, it's kind of hard to tell from, you know, Glenda's in Canada. And... <laughs> I'm in the middle of, you know, the U.S. So we, we try our best to help you out. But this, this uh, I hope this was informative for you. So thank you so much for watching. And if you want to hear about lots of fun things that I find on the Internet about sewing and fashion and what's going on, uh, in the in the sewing world and what's going on at sewhere.com go to sewhere.com slash love note and sign up for the newsletter if you have not already if you're already signed up you should receive it every Tuesday and if you ever have a question simply hit reply on those emails or email me um, from the group and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible and actually that's what I need to do right now is answer some emails okay I hope you get something sewn today and have an awesome almost weekend, right guys? Have an awesome rest of the week.